Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another T Martin Airlines flight. Today, we are going to be attempting to uncover one of this big blue planet's many mysteries. We are going to be venturing in to the Bermuda Triangle. Yes, that's right. A source of folklore, a source of terror, a source of mystery. The Bermuda Triangle is a large section of the Atlantic Ocean that has many unexplained fatalities and disappearances of ships and aircraft throughout the years. It's, uh, it's, it's connected between Miami, San Juan, which is gonna be right down here, and then Bermuda, which is up here. So this, this triangle right here is the source of many, many unexplained disappearances. And we're gonna fly right into the heart of it. The best part is we are gonna be attempting to do this in an Icon A5. This is a tiny two-seater amphibious light sport aircraft. It is, um, it's slow. It can't go very far, but it can land on water. So we're gonna attempt to land in the middle of the triangle. So these things are actually really sick. They're, they're, you know, a lot smaller, a lot less powerful than a normal personal aircraft and uh, just a, a very light footprint. You can actually tow them on a trailer behind your car. They can land on ground or in water and uh, they're, they're just, they make flying a lot more accessible. You know what I mean? They could potentially be a little bit dangerous. Uh, there, there have been some notable accidents with them. Roy Holiday, I don't know if you guys know him. He's a, a pitcher. He pitched for, I think, the Blue Jays and then the Phillies. He crashed a few years ago and died in the Gulf of Mexico. There have been a couple other issues and, and questions about the reliability. Seems like overall they're, they're pretty solid. It's just they, they're, they've become so accessible and so cheap and stuff like that that maybe people that shouldn't be flying them or are flying them a bit too aggressively are flying them. I don't know. They look pretty cool though. Like this is this is something tiny you could just have like in the lake in your backyard and like take off and go fly around and reland it. So who knows? Maybe one day I'll have to get a pilot's license and get one of these bad boys. But um, we'll see if she could take on the Bermuda Triangle. This doesn't even look like an aircraft. This looks like a jet ski. This looks so sick. Look at all the carbon fiber and stuff. This looks like a mix of a jet ski with like a high-end sports car. We've got like a little joystick instead of a, a normal yoke like this, which is kind of interesting. There's your throttle. I mean, this this looks like something that I feel like your average Joe could just kind of hop into and, and, and go for a flight. <laughs> How much does one of these things cost? Price for a fully equipped A5 is $389,000. Base price is two hundred and seventy dollars for an airplane. That's actually really cheap. Turn on the engine here. We're gonna throttle up. Chels, I think I know what I have on my Christmas list. Just, uh, you know, please see if, if you can make that happen. Ooh, listen to her start up. You only have that single prop in the back. It's very limited. Oh, we've got to take our, our parking brake off. Um, very limited in horsepower and stuff. So it's, I mean, this is truly like a light sport aircraft. It's not meant to go long distances. In fact, technically we can't even make it to the middle of the Bermuda Triangle on one tank of gas. We're gonna pretend like we're gonna be able to do a mid-air refuel and we're just gonna have to reload it back up when we get farther out, but I wanted something that was gonna be able to land on the water. But yeah, this is not your traditional aircraft. It's, you know, like a, I, I don't know. Try to think of, of, it's like an ATV to a car or something like that. Like it, it's a lot smaller, it's a lot lighter, can't go as far, but it's still kind of a similar thing, I guess. It's kind of a decent, a decent uh, uh, description of it. Dude, this is sick though, like this, this feels so manageable. I'm gonna go ahead and put our uh, our flaps up. We're gonna put our landing gear up. We're gonna give us a bit more uh, a bit more gas, and we're flying out of San Juan here. I love Puerto Rico. One of my favorite places in the world, without a doubt. Can't wait to go back one day. We are. Uh, I'm thinking we're gonna have to to do an episode flying around like Puerto Rico and. Vehicles and, and stuff like that checking out the island checking out the sights and sounds actually you know what I say I say we try to try to test the water landing here We've got a nice little lake or a bay or whatever this thing is So we're gonna try to come in here. We got to lose a lot of our uh, a lot of our speed I'm gonna go ahead and put our flaps all the way down as well And we're gonna see we're gonna we're gonna try to make a little little smooth water landing here Dude, this is so sick all right, we gotta lose, we're losing lake here. Definitely have to lose a lot more speed. Come in nice and easy. We're coming in a bit hot. That is nerve wracking. Skimming the water here. Dude, could you imagine? Look out the window. We're skipping along the water. Yeah, we, we, we came in a bit too hot, I'm not gonna lie. 
but that's that's all right look at this it worked out Getting down to speed here, we're gonna be good to go. Now, I, I don't think we're gonna have brakes in the water, so it's, it's, again, kind of like a jet ski. You gotta make sure that you know what's in front of you and how much space you have and stuff. But dude, this is so sick. Are you kidding me? This is amazing. All right, let's see if we can throttle out of this this bad boy. You guys think we're gonna be able to get up over the, um, up over the, up over the trees? We're gonna put our flaps back up. Oh shoot, we're not gonna have enough speed. I hope we have enough speed. We might, we might, we might, we might. Yes, sir. Just barely. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's probably an example of why you shouldn't give underqualified people to, you know, access to, to very inexpensive and, and maybe a little bit sketchy aircraft because they're going to try to do stupid things like that. But uh, here we go. I think this is, this is like the newer San Juan. So... Uh, it, it's kind of cool, like San Juan has like the, the main business district and stuff like that, like the main part of the downtown area of the city, which is I think what we're flying over right here. But then a little bit further out on the, the edge of this island, there's kind of like uh, the, the old area where when it was first founded, that's where people settled. Still has a lot of the old like, you know, cobblestone streets. That's where the cruise ships come into port. They've got like the really colorful buildings and really, really cool roads and stuff like that. Hopefully some of you guys have uh, have seen our, our vlogs from out there. And uh, we've also got some really cool forts. Look at how beautiful this is. Oh my goodness. Just in our own personal little plane here flying around. Checking out the beauty that is Puerto Rico. So we're gonna come back over here, I believe. Down here on the tip is kind of more, more of the old San Juan area. This is just such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. If you guys haven't been, you definitely have to go. You guys can see we've got a couple of cruise ships in port. Looks like there's one cruise ship, maybe, is that a yacht next to it? That might be a yacht next to it. Again, I, I kinda, I, I feel like Puerto Rico deserves its own, its own episode, so I don't, I don't want to get into the, the history or give you guys any fun facts or anything. I just kind of wanted to wanted to buzz over some of these forts. We, we showcased these forts in the vlogs. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. The, the roof doesn't exactly look like you would expect it to, but uh, everything else looks pretty good. You can see all those old streets and the colorful buildings and stuff. Yeah, we're eventually going to uh, gonna come back and check that out. But let's let's go ahead and head out here. Goodbye to Puerto Rico. We are heading out into the Great Blue Beyond, and uh, we are officially in the outskirts of the Bermuda Triangle. But we've got a long ways to go. Flying north out of uh, out of San Juan here, and this, I mean, this would just be incredible. Imagine just skimming the, the surface of the ocean like this. How cool this would be. Oh my goodness. This is actually, I mean, may he rest in peace. This is, this is something that the Roy Holiday had said. He's like, he tweeted a couple weeks before he ended up crashing that flying the A5 over the water quickly felt like you were flying a fighter jet, which, I mean, I, I can totally see how this would be very tempting to do, but uh, you got to be smart, man. Apparently when he crashed, I was just looking at it because I was curious if it was like more of the plane's fault or what. Apparently he was doing extreme high speed maneuvers and crazy acrobatics and turns and stuff within five feet of the water. He was going under the Tampa Bay Bridge at some points, which is not a very tall bridge. And when he crashed, he had like amphetamines and painkillers and morphine in his blood. So he was uh, not being very smart. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't venture to say that that's, that's an issue with the plane. But um, anyway, yeah, we are heading out into the Bermuda Triangle here, flying low having a good time and uh, let's let's talk about this Bermuda Triangle it's also known as Hurricane Alley or the Devil's Triangle okay so it's 440,000 square miles of ocean again between Miami Bermuda and San Juan and uh, it's one of the most heavily trafficked shipping routes in the world cruise ships shipping ships you know all, all kinds of like container cargo ships oil ships whatever you may have it all kinds of ships go through here going to the u.s going down to the caribbean coming over from europe stuff like that so it's got a ton of ship traffic but yet for whatever reason lots of ships 
end up just like disappearing out of nowhere and nobody finds anything they don't find wreckage they don't hear any mayday messages it's just like you're wiped off the map same thing for aircraft it's a really popular you know commercial flight path to be able to go down to the caribbean a lot of personal aircraft and people you know going going down to enjoy their time on the islands aircraft will just disappear off the radar they can't find any wreckage they can't find any black boxes to find out what's going on it's like people just disappear even all the way back in 1492 when columbus was sailing the ocean blue he noticed some weird stuff going on out here he described it as a flame of fire crashing into the sea there was some like unexplained thing that happened now obviously there were no aircrafts back then i don't know what bit of fire could be falling into the sea but he saw something fall into the sea and uh you know obviously that is a little bit weird but some other notable events is the uss cyclops in 1918 this is the most deadly event that's happened so this was a a naval ship that was out there 309 men disappeared never to be heard from again 309 men on a big ship how does that happen how, how can you not track its last seen position and go and find it i mean i understand it'll sink but like some people are going to float some things are going to float you're going to see some wreckage and stuff there's no icebergs out here i mean i i, I can't imagine they were sunk by by you know a war thing like I, there's not going to be like a russian sub out here that would have sunk them or something like that they just straight up disappeared wasn't bad weather kind of a, a you know a normal day i mean obviously out here in the middle of the atlantic it's it's going to be a little bit rougher than this on average it, it depends on the day but typically you're going to have some some fairly serious waves especially if you've got storms off in the distance and stuff but unexplained over 300 people just gone in 1945 we had flight 19 which was kind of like just a, a military testing maneuver just you know kind of an average procedure to go out there and, and they had five bomber planes fly out and they were going to do like you know certain turns and stuff and, and do whatever and then come back to base they went out into the bermuda triangle never to be seen again five different planes again the weather wasn't bad there weren't any like super crazy conditions or anything like that i could understand if it was two planes and they crashed into each other and there was like you know nobody made it back that would make sense but it was five planes five trained military pilots that went out not a single one of them was able to radio back what was wrong not a single one of them was was you know able to do anything they just disappeared never to be seen again i think they found like a little bit of oil in the water but that's it obviously they scrambled a search and rescue mission to be able to go and find them when they didn't end up returning back one of the search and rescue planes disappeared mysteriously 13 men on board again never to be seen again and there are countless 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 details of this whether it be you know big events like that or small events you know little personal planes private jets families going out flying to you know whatever it may be puerto rico or something like that they go out and you just disappear off the radar never to be seen again never to be heard from again nobody can really explain it there's even the, the Catamara 4 which was a, a private yacht like a personal yacht they found it adrift one day I, I think this is back in the 50s or something like that so this yacht went out and obviously you've got all the passengers you've got the crew and stuff like that and they found this yacht empty floating adrift at sea with nobody on board how how do a bunch of people just fall off a yacht like there's no way all the people fell off the yacht how did they disappear we don't know we ended up turning a little bit more uh, more west than we wanted to. That's that's Puerto Rico right there. We were flying parallel with it. We're gonna turn back north, and uh, we we are gonna head out of here, man. This is uh, this is gonna be a long journey. If we pull up our map here. I mean, I'm not even gonna be able to. I'm not gonna be able to zoom out far enough. We we need. I mean, Bermuda should be should be. Oh, uh, that's that's like Maine and stuff. I think Bermuda's right here. So we we have to fly. We have to fly that far. We've flown this far. We're, we're going the wrong way again. We gotta, we gotta turn this thing. The further away we're getting from Puerto Rico, it's, it's looking like it 
Weather might be taking a turn for the worst. I don't know. We're starting to get some more clouds and stuff. You guys can see we actually have a, a fairly dark cloud right here in front of us. I don't think it's raining or anything, but it definitely is. Uh, it's getting a little bit more windy. You guys can see we've got some more chop out there down in the water. It's not quite as, as smooth as it once was. Let me take a look at, uh, at where we're at. So we're still headed north. You guys can see Puerto Rico's down here. So we're, we're starting to get into it. I wish I could, could zoom out more. Miami's over here. So we're almost even with Miami. Yeah, we're, we're really starting to get more towards the center of the triangle. We, we aren't there yet. We've got, got some room to go. I think we want to turn to the right a little bit. We still do have a little bit of, of sun out there off to our right, but I would, I would definitely venture to say it's starting to get a little bit more sketchy. We're seeing some white caps on the tops of the waves and stuff like that, so we're just going to keep pushing forward and uh, I'll let you guys know what happens. Those pockets of rain out here, I'm pretty sure that's, that's rain coming across the ocean. Dude, this, this is getting sketchier by the minute. We've still got those angry looking waves down there. We've got little little pockets of sunshine, which you can see we still have some, some blue clouds and stuff up there, but uh, I, I think that's rain. Let's go fly into it. We made it into our little pocket of sunshine here. Almost would have called that the eye of the storm. Hurricanes always have like a, a big circular pocket in the middle where it's super calm and sunny and nice, and then you've got the craziness happening all around you. But yeah, dude, this, I mean, this, this, is, this is getting sketchy. It feels comforting seeing the, the plane light up and we've got like the bright whites and stuff like that. I'm, I'm trying to make it, I don't know if these are little fog pockets or rain pockets or what, but I'm trying to get into it. It looks gnarly all around us, all sides. Look at the, the dark ocean down there. That was beautiful and blue not too long ago. Now it looks super sketch. Is that rain? Yep, I see rain. We've got little rain droplets on our windows. This is not good, not a tiny little thing like this. Oh, visibility is going down. We're still heading north. I think we want to go a little bit more northeast than north. Look at all those little water droplets go. Oh, that is so beautiful. You've got the, the ocean in the background. Mother Ocean does not look happy with us. It's gotten to the point that I can't see anything. I, I literally, I could kinda, I could kinda see the ocean out there, but dude, there's, there's rain all over the place. This is terrifying. Okay, we're not even going the right way, Trev. We gotta, we gotta turn, we gotta be careful though. Everything is just gray. I, I can't see anything. We wanna make sure uh, we're losing altitude. Down here, we're underneath this cloud layer so we can kinda see a little bit better. Dude, we're having massive gusts of wind. The, the plane just shakes all over the place. This is terrifying. I mean, I feel like if we're gonna put it down, this would be the place. This, this is probably the, the worst weather we're gonna get we're not even going north anymore I'm, I'm, we're, our plan is to land in Bermuda hopefully so we, we need to make sure we're going north and a little bit east it's still I think if we if we take a look at our map here it should yeah Bermuda is, is right up there TXKF so we're we're looking for that north and a little bit east but dude this is so sketchy look at how much we're moving these gusts of wind come in and just batter the aircraft Flaps are all the way down here. Just bring it in nice and slow, Trev. We don't we don't have to worry about these massive waves. Oh my goodness, dude. There's no way this is a good idea. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be. Are we actually gonna be able to set it down on these waves, dude? I we're not going forward. The, the wind is just pushing us around wherever it wants to push us. These things are massive. Okay, we're starting to stall a little bit. Need to find a, a flat spot. This looks like a good spot right here. Right, right on the. Oh, we're gonna go into the side of a wave. Oh, we, we went through it. Okay. Uh, uh, we're underwater. Oh, now we're on top of it. All right. Nice, nice job. It's a good thing this thing's amphibious because it appears like we're going underwater a little bit. Uh, yep, we're going underneath the water. Uh, <laughs> I don't think the game necessarily, look at the size of that wave, intended uh, or, or thought anyone would be stupid enough to, to try to attempt this. <laughs> try to land in the water. All right, let's, let's go ahead and throttle her up. I'm gonna put our uh, I'm gonna put our flaps up and we're we're gonna try to we're gonna try to fly out of this thing, dude. This is insanity. This is so cool. Full throttle. Come on. Uh, we're losing it. We're losing it. We're losing it. We're kind of underwater. We gotta we gotta get up above the waves, boys. Flaps up. Flaps up. Let's try to climb. Let's 
I think we're kind of stuck on the water here. Just, just surfing through waves. <laughs> I really wish we were getting thrashed around in it. We could actually like ride the surface of the waves. I can't, uh, I can't, oh, there we go. We're pulling up. Come on, come on, old girl. She wants to face the wind. We can face the wind. That's fine. We've got to try to face the wind. We've got to, we've got to get those, those wind underneath our wings so we can maybe start to get a little bit of lift. This is just insanely stupid. This is incredibly stupid. I don't know who would actually try to attempt this. It's a thunderstorm. We've got, we've got lightning happening out here and stuff. All right, we, we, we need to go north. We need to go land in, uh, land in Bermuda. So apparently there's an airport out here somewhere. We're, we're getting close. Let me bring up our, uh, our VFR map. Should give us a slightly better view. Be able to see what kind of an approach we want to make. It looks like we might be able to land on this little runway right here. Is that a runway? I mean, I, I see that this is the big boy runway, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this this is a little little runway right here. It's like we've got some some fairly blue skies off to the left right there. Too bad that's not where we're going to land. You guys can see on our, our little little HUD here. We're uh, we're heading in. Should be going over land here sometime soon. You guys see any land? Is that land? Oh, that's land down there. Yep, you can barely make out just like a little road and stuff. Dude, this is, this is sketch. Our first time ever landing in bad weather, kind of exciting. Feel like landing out in the middle of, of the Bermuda Triangle wasn't our best idea, but we survived, we made it through, and uh, now we just gotta be able to put this bird down the tarmac. You can see some of the like lighter blue waters just off to our left over there. Oh, it looks beautiful out there. Unfortunately, that's not where we're going. We're going, oh shoot, this is the runway right here. Okay, all right. All right, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to do a, a little a little maneuver. You gotta pay attention, Trev. Look at that beautiful day out there in front of us. Just kidding. We gotta turn back this way. Come on, baby. All right, so we're gonna have to lose some altitude. We're gonna have to lose some airspeed. We're definitely gonna put our landing gear and flaps down. Oh, it seems like the island's starting to kind of greet us with a bit of a nice afternoon. Storms are gonna pass. As they always do, dude, this is going to be so hard to land. I don't think we're going to be able to land in a crosswind like this. I don't even think, I don't even think this is a, uh, this is a landing strip right here. I'm pretty sure this is just kind of like a parking lot. So I'm thinking we're going to go out and around. We're going to try to play this safe. The problem is we can't even fly straight. The wind is just pushing us. We've got this insane, insane crosswind. Look at all the, the angry water down there, the beaches and stuff. Oh, we've got some baseball diamonds at the airfield. Really? That's kind of interesting. I mean, this is this is definitely beautiful. Look at all these houses out here. On a nice day, this would be a fantastic place to vacation. I don't know about stay though. But we're gonna wanna we're gonna wanna go around here. We're gonna do a nice little turn and see if we can set this bird down. I'm gonna try to get behind it. The camera's even doing weird stuff due to the wind, dude. We can't we can't even keep the camera straight. There we go. We're gonna come in. Landing gear and flaps down. I'm gonna start reducing our, our airspeed. Oh my goodness, dude, this is this is so sketch. Let me go inside the cockpit just to be able to see a little bit better. We have a lot of airspeed here. Probably in big part to the wind, but we have a long runway to work with. That wind is pushing us right to left, so we're gonna have to aim a little bit more right if we wanna be able to put her down. Come on, girl. You got this. You got this. Everything is all the way down. We're losing our airspeed. Come on. All right. We're on the ground. Not the smoothest, you know, softest landing ever, but keep in mind we've got like 60 mile an hour wind gusts that have, that have been pushing us from the side the entire time. So we made it. We survived in one piece. We have a uh, nice blue skies off there to the right, and then we've got a nasty storm off to our left and in front of us. You guys can still see all the uh, the lightning and stuff happening. So, whoa, look at the wave off to the right right there. Those are, that's borderline tsunami. That is way above ground level. That That is, that is terrifying. All right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna see you guys in our next episode, hopefully with a little bit better weather. Let me know where you guys would like to fly next and uh
drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. 